Well, good evening to those that are here in uh, person and are online to our uh, Wednesday night recharge, midweek recharge, as I like to call it. I actually did uh, miss you guys last week. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were moving, but you know, we, we took time to, to watch the Wednesday night service, so we, we sat down and we watched Branson and uh, uh, another good one, so that was nice. But uh, I'm back. Uh, we're, we're pretty much completely moved in, which is great. Um, and thank you to him for covering for me last week. That gave me a little bit more time to, to uh, end the series, which we'll be ending at the end of the month. Um, and we're, yeah, we are almost done. Um, the series about having calm in a world that's anything but, right? I mean, anything but. We started in June, and after, after tonight, there's two more. Uh, and Lord willing, I'll return to teaching the discipleship classes in September, specifically the one in September about how to lead someone to the Lord and using your testimony. So there is a sign-up for that. If you haven't taken it, please take it. If you've already taken it, I'm encouraging those to take it again because that uh, you need that. Heart of the Point needs counselors to be able to, 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 to just know that when you sit down and you talk to someone, you can lead them to the Lord. And so that's what that class is designed to do. Anybody ever see the Paul Newman movie, Nobody's Fool? It's not a very well-known Paul Newman, as, as he was later on, in life, and so it's not a, 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 a even a good one at that. But there's this one scene where uh, he's been invited to his family's house for Thanksgiving. He, uh, he's been estranged from that family, and so he hasn't uh, taken the invitation before. So he decides to come. He drives up in his pickup truck, and he arrives and he walks through the screen door and uh, looks around, and all he sees is chaos. Kids are running through the house, the shouts from parents to them to stop running through the house. Uh, adults are freaking out that, uh, that will the meal be ready in time, and then others, uh, somebody forgot something, and they're running back and forth, kind of like your house at Thanksgiving, maybe, running back. And then uh, another kid spills something all over the floor, and then another yell breaks out. And so there's Paul Newman playing the grandfather to a lot of these kids that he hasn't seen in years, and he looks to his right chaos. Looks to his left, chaos. And then he does what many of us would want to do. He turns right around and goes back out the door, gets in his truck and drives away. <laughs> and so a picture of sometimes what we like to do sometimes, but um, the point of that is that the world around us is chaotic. It's noisy. It's messy. And yes, sometimes we do want to pull back, but we don't want others that have found their way to the point because we, we keep having visitors come every week, and we don't want them to turn away. Amen? But all of us, and, and no matter who you are, you're all, all of us are seeking some kind of calm, wanting some kind of rest in this crazy time. And all of us need to be reminded that others, and I'm, I'm talking about those that are far from church, whether they're wandering or unsaved, whether they know it or not, they're seeking a place uh, to understand God, to understand what is going on. And that place is here. We, we want to understand God every time more, every time we come here. We, we teach Scripture and only Scripture. Um, and so we, this series we've been talking about, we need to continue to give our anxiousness over to Jesus every single day. Not just, well, I did on Thursday. You know, every day because something's going to come in your path that's going to try to shake you up. And so the more we do that, the more we give everything that we can to Jesus, I trust me and trust God more than me, that anxiety will lessen. If you're giving all to him, that will lessen. That You could argue, well, you know what, I'm, my life is so chaotic and there's so much anxiousness. You have to ask yourself, not me, I don't live with you. You have to ask yourself, how many times are you going to the foot of the cross? You know, how, how, many, how, how is your devotion time right now? How is your quiet time? And you have to be honest and say, you know what? Not very good. I think we're getting to the root of the problem then. Anxiety might be creeping in through those ways. Uh, so tonight, we're, again, we're headed to the end of the series that's been called Calm in the Chaos. Eighth message tonight is called Peace in the Storm. Specifically, we're going to be discussing the peace to have while, um, I borrowed a word from Branson, smack dab in the middle of a bad time in your life. Um, and have, you, have, you, have you heard the phrase, uh, perfect storm, or even seen the movie, The Perfect Storm? All right, that, that's a phrase that fishermen use to describe a storm where you have separate elements 
all come together at the same time. Uh, a bad wind uh, by itself is just a bad wind. But you add a cold front, and then you add rain to that, and you have a formidable disaster. Okay? But you don't have to be a fisherman to experience a perfect storm. Have you ever experienced, we've, many have experienced layoffs in a recession period. You're laid off when the economy is at its worst. Or you get a severe illness or are hospitalized at the moment you got a new job or got a promotion or a transfer. What about a, a rejection letter to college at the same time you've just been rejected in a relationship, right? It, it, one at a time, we can handle. We can handle one challenge at a time, but when you add another and another and another, sometimes it's too much for us to handle. Some have then asked, can I and will I survive this? Well, it's answered in the Bible in a verse that we've gone over numerous times in this particular series, and that's Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right, so let's, as I like to do, let's look deeper into that one single verse. This is not the peace from God, as I said maybe a couple of weeks ago. It's the peace of God. Our Heavenly Father is giving himself to you. Now think about that. So you have, if you have, you've been saved, you've given your life to him, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the peace of God. And remember that peace that you can't completely understand, that we can't completely understand. I mean, that's like understanding the, the realm or the, the fathoming God's love. We just, we don't see it from person to person. And so his love is above, it's, it's nothing that you can even put into words almost. That's the same with the peace of God. And that's one of our points later on. But that particular peace, um, if we could ever possibly, that we can't, he's telling you, it, it surpasses all understanding, so you're never going to fully comprehend it. Um, that particular peace can give us an overwhelming calm. Amen? All right. And I, and I say it, I want to slow it down in that regard because we have many, and many that go to church, that just aren't very peaceful, Right? And it's because we're trying to battle or balance two types of worlds, you know, living one way and then praising God in another. But you have to give, you have to understand that, look at that verse and just make that, uh, memorize it if you can. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And we haven't even gotten to the second part of that verse about guarding your hearts and minds. We're talking about just not understanding this peace, God's peace, and, and it's just overwhelming to you. It's, it's having him all together at the same time. Um, and so it defy, that particular piece defies logic. It defies any schemes or efforts to try to explain it. You know, you can't put it into words. The peace of God isn't any, any kind of peace that is a human achievement. It's a gift from heaven. Look at John 14, 27. This is another one. I mean, again, as I mean, if you brought your Bibles, Underline and highlight, circle, all kinds of things. Because here's one. Peace I leave with you. My peace, right? Circle that, highlight or something. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Right? Why would we be troubled? Why would we be afraid? Because he's telling you, I leave my peace with you, the believer. The Christian, the Christ follower, I leave my peace with you. And yet, there are so many of us that just, I don't know where to turn. Turn to Jesus. It's, it's, he's given you peace. And I've said before in any series that I do that we can access the Holy Spirit, but are we accessing the Holy Spirit? I know that I've said that over and over, but it just, you look out in the world and you go, what is wrong? Aside from knowing that the world needs the Lord, Right? Because there are churches that are closing. We can't understand that. All kinds of things. Where, where are, you remember the movie Courageous where at the end it said, uh, where are you men of courage? And then that great scene where men started popping up left and right. Where are the people, where are the Christ followers of courage uh, on this planet, right? With voices to, to lead and to speak out. It's just, it just, it, just something I've been thinking about. So, uh, so Jesus promise you, promises you 
His peace. He's not just telling you, here's the peace from God. This is my peace. I give to you. Everybody here online, I give to you. So if, if we don't fully understand that, again, we might have found, you know, like a mechanic going, well, there's your problem. We might have found the pinpoint of where anxiety is actually slipping into your life and buying up property, right? You have to receive God's peace. Allow it to be who you are. I, I, I'm very passionate. I love the Word of God. It's, it's, it's a, I'm about it, everything. But I can't, like, take the passion and go, here, take some of that. I just want everybody to be so in love with God, man, they can't be in love with anything else, you know? I'm not saying don't love your wife or your husband. I don't mean that. I just meant if, if, if you're loving God first, your life is going to flourish, right? Trust that. So I'm going to try to help us understand this piece tonight. So how about this? Think of the peace that calmed Jesus' heart when he was falsely accused, right? You ever been falsely accused? I have been in the last year. Did Jesus lash out? No. Did he start pointing fingers and placing blame? Like they, they accused him. He, he, could have, he could have said, no, okay, hang on. I'm here because of you. You know, he started pointing fingers. He didn't. He's our human example of how we can endure and not give in to sin. Like I said, I've been falsely accused of things, and I can tell you many times I did not act like Jesus. Right? But here's the thing. Don't just be, too many people were saying, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. That's exactly, I'm, that, I've been like that way my whole life. No, 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 let me finish my sentence. Sometimes I didn't act like that, but I'm learning to. I'm striving to. I'm not going to be settled by just going, well, that's how I act in a crisis. You accuse me, watch out, I'm Wolverine. I'll come out, <laughs> you know. No, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be able to go, okay. I know that that's not true, but I'm not going to lash out at you. What about the peace that steadied his voice when he spoke to Pilate? He could have said, Pilate, you're smarter than this. You know what to do. Do it. He, he did. He, he remained calm. And finally this, talking about peace that surpasses all understanding. Consider the peace that kept his thoughts clear and his heart pure as he hung on the cross. Right? For you and for me. Think about that. I mean, you'd want to scream. And what are some things he said? Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Led someone to the Lord right there. Led him to himself, another way to say it. So believe me tonight, or don't believe me, but all of us can have this kind of peace. You're thinking, man, that's Jesus. No, I don't think I can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It all depends on who do you believe in. Do you believe the verses that God created the heavens and the earth? And that, that same God is Jesus in flesh and can do anything. If you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit, you're already on your way. Uh, but some will chalk it up to just being something unreachable so they don't even try. Right? It's, it's, it's sad when you think about that. They're like, ah, I'll never be like that, so I'm not even going to put in the effort. Well, as Philippians 4, 7 said, this peace of God will and is guarding your hearts protecting your hearts, guarding your minds, protecting your minds through Jesus. There's so much there in that one verse to understand. I would make it your memory verse for the week, but I don't give out homework assignments. Maybe I do. Well, let's discuss some examples in Scripture where peace, this kind of peace was needed in various situations. I've come up with three tonight. Uh, so first of all, to have the peace of God in all of your storms or struggles, you must understand, number one, the peace of God transcends all efforts to explain it. We got a little bit of that from one of the verses. Uh, like I said, words can't do it justice, right, when you're talking about the peace of God. Because you know you're going to have somebody that just is just going to go right over the heads or they're, they're going to inject. It just doesn't mean the same thing to some that it does to you because they haven't reached that stage yet. But let's look at Acts 27, 9 through 12. Since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over, Paul advised that these are his shipmates. He advised them saying, sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, 
but also of our lives. Look at verse 11. 11 is the key verse tonight because this is repeated in our present day over and over and over. Not so much centurions, but look. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. You hear what I read there? You know, Paul is urging and giving godly wisdom, just like you might be to some of your circles of friends, and you get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen and look for what I can see and feel and hear. And so we'll come back to that in a minute. And then verse 12, and because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out the sea from there, and I love this, on the chance that somehow, right? I mean, that alone is funny to me because they're like, we're just going to take a chance and cross our fingers that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest and spending the winter there. We're just going to go on a whim. You know, we, we hope we're going to make it. Does, is anybody, you know, you get on a cruise. I hope this cruise gets to its destination. Is that what you say? No, you're like, this cruise better get to its destination because I've spent a lot of money. and I, I want <laughs> So Paul had the peace of God and it couldn't be understood by those far from God, right? So put it in your circles. you got people that talk to you like you're crazy. And I, like I said, uh, I was thinking about this in another message for another time. But I was thinking of a friend of mine that said, Brian, don't, don't lose it or get angry. They're lost. They don't know what you know. They haven't obtained what you've obtained. They're lost. So then you look at that verse 11. The centurion and the pilot and the owner and all the others we're listening to what they thought they knew instead of listening to godly wisdom. If that's not a message to us today, I don't know what is. They listen more attention to somebody else. Um, so Paul had the peace, and it wasn't understood by them. Therefore, his warning was ignored. How many times have your invitations been ignored? Right? But don't ever give up. We're going to come back to the verses after that and saw that... Um, they don't give up. Despite Paul's warning to the captain, the ship continued to sail for Phoenix. But if you keep reading, you'll see that the winds blew, and it blew them. See, no matter what plan they made, it, the winds blew, and it kept blowing them further and further from the coast and out to sea. And then at that time, it's not in the Bible, but I bet you the centurion wished he'd listen to Paul. It's like, oh, doggone it. Can't go back in time and change that decision, right? That sounds like a lot. Uh, they, had, they had reason to listen to Paul because he was no stranger to shipwrecks or other forms of suffering. I mean, if they'd have known who was talking, I'd have said, wait a second. This guy has experience with this stuff. Let's listen to him. And let's look. We're 2 Corinthians eleven twenty five. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, and I will clarify that's with actual stones, just, just in case. Uh, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. Having known that, I'd be like, I'm listening to this guy because he knows what he's talking He's seen this. Paul, does this look anything like those times? Yes, it does. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to go with you. So he saw the signs of a perfect storm forming, a sea in winter, ferocious winds, and an impatient crew. And so Paul, having the peace of God, gave them wisdom from God. You ever done that? Gave wisdom to somebody that you know is godly wisdom. It's solid wisdom. Only to have them say, that don't sound right. I'm going to go ask somebody else, right? Verse 11, centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the ship owner than to godly wisdom, right? And then, and then the, uh, so they, they, instead of going with godly wisdom, they went with on the chance that somehow they'll make it. And I love that that's how it's worded in the Bible. Somehow they'll make it. But yeah, that don't sound right. I'm going to go ask somebody else. And you go ask a neighbor that has no idea what they're talking about. So when, when you ignore, what usually happens? The storm takes control. Well, um, as I said, uh, they, they faced a rough wind. And if you read those verses between verse 12 and verse uh, 21, the, it's called the Northeaster. And uh, they had to throw their cargo away, throw their tackle away, and all of that. And so we pick up in uh, verse 21, the second part of 21 through 25. Men, you should have listened to me. And, and listen to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart. 
For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar, right? Don't be afraid. You, we've already seen you in Rome. You, ha, ha, you are going to be in Rome, so you're going to make it through this. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I've been told. What a, a, what a wonderful passage because now, how many times have we been in a situation where we're like, what did I talk about a couple weeks ago? If only, if only we had listened to Paul. If only I had done this instead of that, that wouldn't have happened. So what about you? You've consulted the bank. You've changed your diet. You tried rehab, you tightened your budget, you've done everything but invite the peace of God into your life. Peace of God into your daily life. So what is your obstacle? What is holding some of us back? Let God give you perfect peace. So there is no perfect church, there's no perfect pastor or perfect person, only a perfect God, amen? Well, I want to tell you a story, and it happened Monday night. Uh, we moved in last week, and uh, it's, uh, I love it. It's a real pretty house. It's got a real pretty yard. But I knew immediately I'm going to need a lawn guy because I, I'm, I no longer have the strength to do it, unfortunately. I used to love to do it, but uh, I just can't. Uh, uh, evidence of that is moving on Monday up the stairs, down the stairs. After two, I'm done. But anyway, so we, we had called. Uh, I had texted and called around, and so we had two companies come Monday night. And each of them were a couple, a man and a woman. The first group, the first couple came, and they just walked around the house or the outside and then texted a quote later. Great. But the second couple came to the door, and we got to talk to them, and they told us a little about their company. And uh, then we got to talk, and then they got to asking me about what I do. So I got to say I'm a pastor at the Point Church, and I'm not making this up. This is what she said. You mean the perfect church for imperfect people? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, yeah, we've been to your harvest party like the last three or four years. My kids love it. I'm like, that's fantastic. What about sports? Do they, we're getting ready to start flag football. Do they want to play sports? Yes. How can I register? Here's my card. And then they gave us the quote, and I'm like, and I, and I was originally I was going to tell them I'll, I'll let them know tomorrow. But I felt so good about it, and, the, and, the, and their offer was, was good. Um, and I'm like, this is no coincidence. This is no accident. There are no accidents. I'm going to put my heart into ministering to them and uh, let them do their job. And so I just thought it was wonderful. So you guys know, when you wear those shirts, people are noticing. They're reading, and they're remembering. Whether we, we see ugliness in the world, and we don't think, is anybody paying attention? And therefore, I've got somebody in front of me that says, you mean the perfect church for imperfect people? She says, we drive down Bel Air all the time. I'm like, well, stop in. So isn't that, isn't that funny and just awesome in the same moment? That happened Monday night, two nights ago. All right, so let's move on. Second of all, to have peace in your storms, ask yourself, number two, is fear coming at you from all sides? If so, let God speak to you. In another way, he's going to speak to you, but listen up. Allow him to speak to you. And so like in the previous point, are you listening to God in your storms or are you listening to your anxiety? If you're listening to your anxiety, then fear is probably coming at you from all sides. You, know, you, you can't even swat it away. Well, let's look at another example in Scripture of uh, needing peace in a storm. And we're going to go to Daniel 10. Uh, Twice to happen to your people in the later days, for the vision is for days yet to come. Well, one, I use this example of verses to show you, yes, there are angels that minister to us, and I'm going to prove it with Hebrews 1.14. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? And so, you know, is fear coming at, from you all sides? Let God speak to you and, and do what he's already planned to do. Sometimes we, we wave off stuff because we just uh, are not in the, uh, the right heart or the right uh, thought. But look at that. There's an angel come to help Daniel. And so the first day that Daniel sought an answer from the Lord, God heard him and sent an angel. And then we read that that angel was delayed by one of Satan's emissaries for 21 days. 
The angel was assisted by Michael, and the angel prevailed and made it to Daniel. And I love that that little story is in there. Um, and it's all because Daniel never quit praying. Never quit praying. It, sometimes we see stories in the Bible, and we don't know if that's answered an hour later, a day later, a week, a year, 10 years later. Look at stories like how long they had to wait to enter the promised land. You're talking 40 years, you know, Poor Caleb was, what, 85 then when he was in his 40s? I mean, a lot of times we miss what's right in front of us in the time. And so Daniel never quit praying. Is fear coming at you from all sides? Don't stop praying. Daniel's prayer was effective because it was offered up humbly. And he desired to understand God more and was determined to get an answer. Do you want to know, do you want to understand God more? I know I do every day. I want to understand. I want to grow closer. You'll hear me pray. I pray that that person draws closer to you, God. Well, I want to as well. That's why every day is another climb. I want to draw closer and closer every single day. Be determined like Daniel was and never quit praying. And to know angels are under the authority of God that are helping us, we can experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. All right? We could put categories of, well, I didn't think we were talking about angels. Well, this peace that surpasses all understanding is, is so vast. Like I said, we, well, God said we can't fully fathom it. Satan is going to throw everything he's got at you. He even attacks the angels that watch over you. And I've said before, this, isn't, this should never be a casual life. This is serious. This is ser a serious Christ follower. And I was reminded, I just threw this in for really good measure, but Psalm 46, the first part of 10, be still and know that I'm God. We're talking about calm in a chaotic world, and sometimes the answer is just stop. Be still, breathe, and know that God is going to be God. Right? Trust Trust that because there's so many that are like, well, oh, I, I hope God, no. God is, was, will always be there. And then a few weeks ago, going back, um, if you have the Holy Spirit, then you, you are in the presence of God everywhere you go. I mean, think about that like next time the temper is lost, right? That's a good reminder for me. So I, I told you the, 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 the passion I have, I love this church, I love everybody in it. I love uh, serving and whatever I can do. And it's not something I can say, hey, okay, here's a piece of that. You go be passionate. But I'm telling you, you can have this peace in the middle of your storm because you're not alone. You're not alone. God is with you. And if you've given your life to him, you belong to him. You know, you belong to him. He is a part of you. Himself, he gives, I give you my peace. And fear may have, surrounded, have you surrounded but God has already defeated fear. He's already defeated fear by sending Jesus to defeat all sin and all fear. So again, we're kind of like, well, then why are we even doubting sometimes? Why are we questioning things? Jesus has come. He's won the victory. He shed his blood. If you've received him, you are saved. You'll be standing next to him face to face. And there's so much, you're not earning salvation. You got it when you accepted him. But there's so much for us to do here. There's so much um, that he asks us to do while we wait because we anticipate his return. And while we wait, there's so much to do just even at the Point Church. There's so much to do, so, uh, so many important things. And so let God speak to you and then do, you're not doing me a favor, but I'm going to use the word, do me a favor. Listen to him. Listen to him. Be still and know that he's God. And, and that's the most important thing is to actually listen to God. Um, and third and final, uh, to have peace in your storms, we need to, number three, expect to see God fight for you. He's always near. And I'm going to use, uh, I had this set before. Uh, there was a Sunday message with it, and I think I had one in the previous series about uh, Jehoshaphat. But Second Chronicles 20, I'm going to read three through four. Uh, so expect God to fight for you. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord. He'd been given bad news. We know this story. He would say, hey, guys, come running. Uh, hey, uh, Jehoshaphat, um, there's an army coming, and uh, it's bad. 
And so right there it says, Jehoshaphat was afraid, just like anybody would be. But it's what you do next, right? What did he do next? Set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And then look at this. This, this. I had this already in here, but I wrote a note because it just occurred to me. And Judah assembled, right? You know what they did? They responded. When there's something that the point needs, we need responses. You know, we need to hear from its people with a shout and saying, yes, I'm all in. And I love that. That didn't, that didn't hit me when I prepared this at first, but I looked at those two words, Judah assembled. Jehoshaphat called, and Judah said, what do you need? That's huge. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I taught on that weeks ago or months ago, and I didn't take it from that angle. You know, that's why I love the Bible. It's living and breathing. There's, you could preach the same book of the Bible probably for a year, and it'd be a different every single time. Yes. And so I know that we've covered that story, but what do you do when you're told something awful is coming your way? Yeah, you usually, what? You know, fear. But what do you do next is what the point is. How often do you set yourself to seek the Lord? You know? Don't answer here. That's between you and God. But how often are you setting yourself to seek the Lord? If, it's all who, if, if that's who you are, man, fantastic. Just keep loving on people and leading them closer as an example to them. But if, you're, if you realize tonight, you go, you know what? No, nah, I get afraid all the time, and I've never, I don't think I'm actively or consistently seeking the face of the Lord. And so what do you do? You don't say, well, you know, that's the way I am. No, you go, you know what? I want to seek the Lord, and I'm going to start over right now. God, forgive me, right? That's what the altars are for. Or your car seat. You know, I've, I've prayed and asked forgiveness while driving. Yes, I had my eyes open, but, you know, but in a way, I'm, I'm on my knees. I'm asking God, yes, yes, your heart. So Jehoshaphat's response to the terrible news should be, in any, if there's an anxiety treatment textbook, his response should be in there. I don't know if there is such a book, but his response. When they say, okay, I have anxiety, what do I do? Uh, okay, seek God's face. Seek the Lord. Many will say, but I don't want to do that. You know, those that are far from God or haven't met God, they won't, that would make no sense to them. But we know when anxiety, when trouble, when struggles arrives on your doorstep, seek the Lord's face. Seek the Lord. What do you want me to do, God? We wonder why the world is the way it is. Uh, and it's not just those that are rejecting God. Yes, that is certainly true and a huge percentage. There's many that have rejected God. But Christians, Christ followers, often fail to seek God in the middle of their crisis. And that is sad, too, because we know better. We know better. We know who we've invited in, and we know who we serve. We know who he is, and yet we still try to straddle both lines. Jehoshaphat's a great example to us because he expected God to fight for him. You know, you read the rest of that passage, as we did uh, a while back, and uh, he reminded God of the times God came through. And in some ways, reading that, he's reminding himself, too, that, you know what? You were there for me then, and you're here for me now. And that's the way we should be um, when a crisis comes our way. Not to, not to go, okay, all right, chips are down, what do we do? No, seek the face of God. God did and will fight for him or fight for you just like he did Jehoshaphat. We, he knew that God was as near to him He's near to us as breath, right? Can't see your breath unless it's cold and you live in Florida, so good luck with that. Um, but he's near to your breathing, so he's as near to you as that. I mean, you can't get closer. What I say, he, you are in his presence. He is a, surra- he's around you. Um, and yeah, so if we know Jesus personally, what then is the problem? I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I will, I will, not in this office, but I mean, I will bang my head against the wall going, what is the problem? Because I, 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 I just, I want you to fall, if you're not all the way there, I just want you to fall in love with Jesus and just be all of him all the time. So when someone sees you, they see Jesus and they go, man, 
Where are they going? If they, I want to go into that church. And so Jehoshaphat so believed in God that he even later on made the great decision to march into battle led by singers. Can you imagine that? You know, bump, 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 bump. Wait a second, we're in the front. You know, and the army's back there. But no, they did it. You know, you know what that does? That shows a confidence in God, right? You know, all the people with weapons are behind me. But I got my trumpet, my drum. I got Tim right here with his drums. I got Rick right here with his guitar. And we're playing. And, and the people with the swords are back there. And they won that victory, right? Because they had confidence in God. Jehoshaphat knew who the battle belonged to. And that, that's, that's the thing. Know that the battle belongs to the Lord. Present your case to him. Let him fight for you. Don't, don't get in his way. Don't get in there, oh, I can handle this, which sounds silly, but we do. Jehoshaphat was expectant of God to intervene and fight for him. And so this is, this is a lesson to be applied by all online here, every, everyone, the whole world. Seek God first in prayer and praise. Lead with worship. Confess your fears Gather up your strength and set your face towards God. Have the peace of God tonight. Again, as we said at the beginning, it's not the peace from God. It's not like he's saying, here, I would like you to try this. No, when you have Jesus, you have his peace. My peace I give to you, he said earlier. My peace, right? And so let the peace of God, or have the peace of God tonight and let him speak to you Let him fight for you. And remember, don't forget what we said earlier. Listen to him. Be still and know that he is God. Just sit there and breathe for a second. And let him in. Let him take over. He already has the answers for you. So it's it's, it's amazing. If we would just let go of all we think we know, all that we think that we've become, and just let God lead completely. And I I mean, we sit here and go, "Mm -hmm, yep, and tap our chest and go, oh, yep preach it, praise it. But yet in our lives, when we're not with each other, it doesn't resemble that, right? So if we would just let him take over and just sit back and watch, man, what a wonderful world it would be. Amen? Let him fight for you. So uh, closing us out, uh, I'm going to read our main verse again. And the peace of God, this is Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which what? surpasses all understanding, which means nobody in here goes, you know what, I completely understand it. Learn from me. No, no, no. It surpasses all understanding. And then get past that part. It will guard, it will protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Man, I got chill bumps. I just, I love that verse. Storms come, winds howl, perfect storms come and go, waves crash and rain brings flooding. Trials come, but Jesus catches his children. Those that have put their faith and trust in him, he is there for them. He holds us. He sends angels. We saw in Scripture earlier. Because you belong to him, you can have his peace in the middle of any storm. What about this storm? Any storm. Anything, you can have that peace. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, where he is Lord and Savior of your life, you won't ever have peace. You'll say, well, you know, I'm, I got a pretty peaceful life. You know, I've never invited Jesus in. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. You may think you do. And so you may be p- facing the perfect storm. Like I said, there, sometimes there's just layoffs, but then there's layoffs in a bad economy. Sometimes there's just illnesses, but then there's illnesses on top of starting a brand new job. It's a perfect storm where more than one element comes together and you just, by ourselves, we can't do it. We can't make it. So if you're facing that kind of situation, right now, tonight, Jesus offers you the perfect peace. Read Philippians 4, 7 until you've got it ingrained in your mind. If you're the type of person that says, you know, I used to be pretty good at memorization. I can't memorize anymore. I can memorize sports stats, but I just can't memorize Bible verses for some reason anymore. I'm telling you, put it on an index card, put it on your dash, and when you're at a stoplight, read Philippians 4, 7 all the time. Next thing you know, you're like, I do remember it, right? Isn't that funny? The more you pour into that, 
you will remember it. Not like I remember who played third base for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1960-something. Some people go, boom, got it. You know, but yet not remember a Bible verse. I don't understand it. Because that is where your peace is going to come from. That is where your healthy living is going to come from. And that is, you know, someone asked me uh, about the order of the home. And I said, look, if I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do under God, if I'm putting God first in everything that I do, Trish and my family are going to flourish. And so are your families. If the right order is in place. If God leads everything, just watch. And if you're questioning, oh, I've never seen that, there's, there's something out of place. And all it is is just communicate with your Lord to find it. You, we go to mechanics and say, hey, I, gotta, I hear this sound. Can you find it? And they go, there it is. Why do we not go to Jesus in the same way? Because he knows and has the answer. We should be, I mean, we're walking with him. Is that what we not say? So trust him to just take care of everything. And I do mean, it sounds silly, it sounds like a bumper sticker, but I mean everything because sometimes we don't, and I'm talking about churches. Otherwise, they wouldn't be closing, right? If they were doing everything that God was asking them to do and fully living it out, I feel they wouldn't be closing. Well, we're going to close in prayer. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for all that you do, all that you've done, and all that you are about to do. Lord, we thank you for uh, the reminder of uh, your peace to just really let Philippians 4, 7 sink in, Lord. Uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding. That peace, when we have it, when we embrace it, digest it, chew on it, it guards our hearts and guards our minds in you, and we thank you for that. What else do we need if, we, if we've got you guarding and protecting us, we need nothing else, Lord. If you, with you in our hearts and leading our lives, we need nothing else. And so we thank you for that, never giving up on us, Lord. We ask you to bless those that are here, bless those, those that are online, our families by extension, and just, Lord, keep us drawing closer to you to, to, to just know you more every single day. And it's in Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Amen. All right, well. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm back. I'm glad, I'm glad the move is mostly over and then I can't be back. I do. I enjoy doing this. I love it. I hope the passion just kind of comes because I, that's, I don't know how to be anybody else. That's, that's me and I want you to just love God like nothing else. We've got Heart of the Point this Saturday. At, uh, so if you're a counselor or a volunteer, I know some of the kitchen staff are there way earlier than me, but we pray about 810 and so gather together. We'll have a great day. And so then if not for there, I'll see you Sunday morning at 930.